Story number one. I was never the type to have my food delivered to me. I loved going out into the world, seeing fresh new faces, window shopping, and being able to touch, see, and smell what I'm buying. However, you could say I had no choice in the matter when I finally decided to start having my food delivered to my house. The first few times went well. I had my weekly groceries delivered to my doorstep. I never opened the door for the delivery man, though. You could say I don't trust people. I never wanted to open my home to someone I didn't know. So, I always left instructions for my food to be left on the doorstep, and I would get them once the delivery man was gone. One day, I was working at home and waiting for a delivery to arrive. I had run out of cereal, milk, and a few other things. It was early in the morning, but there were still a few delivery men in my area working at the time. I received a notification that the delivery was on the way, and I made sure to add a note stating that the food be left on my doorstep. I continued with my work. I was expecting to hear the doorbell ring, followed quickly by the sound of a car engine driving away. I heard the doorbell ring just as a notification appeared on my phone, letting me know that my delivery had arrived. This was expected. What I wasn't expecting was a hard knocking at the door. I put my laptop down and tiptoed over to the window beside my front door. I slowly pulled the curtains aside and peered out. There was a man holding a large brown bag which I can only assume was my food in his hands. He paced in front of my door and there was an angry look on his face. I flinched and jumped back when he banged on the door again. After a few seconds he pressed on the doorbell and held it. The uninterrupted ringing filled my house. I didn't know what was happening. None of the other delivery men had done anything like this before. I didn't want to open the door, but at the same time he had my food, and it didn't look like he was leaving anytime soon. He glanced my way and I practically fell backwards to get away from his eyes. I stayed crouched on the floor below the window. It was quiet for a long time. Suddenly, the knocking started up again, but this time it was on the window I was just looking out of. I shouted at him to go away. At the time I wasn't thinking, and I should have kept quiet. The knocking stopped, and he responded with a soft laugh. That laughter chilled my blood. I'd never felt so scared before in my life. I ran around the house, locking all the doors and closing all the windows. I think I sat in the dark for hours after that. At some point, the man left. I'm not sure when. I unlocked the door a few hours later to find my food left by the front door. Let's just say, I'll be getting my food directly from the store from now on. Story number two. Sweaty Palms. It was late one night and I had some friends over. We were already drunk and yet we carried on drinking. We had no plans on going out, but we were all dressed up as if we were. Sometimes you've just got the feeling to put some makeup on, wear your best dress, and dance around your own house. When you get drunk, you also get hungry. I live in a pretty secluded area. There's nothing nearby, and neither I nor my friends were in any state to be driving somewhere. So, we decided to have food delivered. In this day and age, having food delivered to your house or practically anywhere is the easiest thing in the world. I wanted pizza, one of my friends wanted sushi, and another one was craving a cheese and chicken burger. Maybe it's just because we were all drunk at the time, but we all found it pretty amazing that we could get all of those things delivered to us. The notification on my phone went off and I heard the car hooter outside my house. My friends urged me to go out and fetch our food. I was a little annoyed by the fact that the delivery man was staying in his car and not bringing the food to my house. I was far too hungry and far too drunk to care all that much. I ran out, barely able to stand up straight, and met the guy at his car. He opened the passenger side window and smiled at me from the driver's seat. He eyed me when I reached the car. There was a look in his eye that I didn't notice at first. I asked him about the food and he pointed to the large box resting on the passenger seat. Now, I realize how stupid I was but not when I did it. I leaned through the car's window and reached for the food. As my arm stretched out, the man's hand shot towards me and grabbed hold of my wrist. His knuckles turned white as his grip around my wrist tightened. I didn't react at first. I wasn't sure how to react. I felt his sweat sink into my pores and his nails dug into my skin. It made me sick. I pulled away from him, but he wouldn't let me go. He held on tight and my heart raced in my chest. It felt like I was stuck in that position for hours. I could hear him talking to me. He was complimenting me and saying all sorts of things. His voice was muffled. The only thing I could hear was my heart beating and the blood rushing to my head. My legs felt weak. I don't know why I didn't cry out for help. 
All that alcohol was hitting me harder than I expected, and my empty stomach suddenly felt much too full. Eventually, I managed to pull myself loose of his grip. I ran back to the house and locked the door. It took a while before my friends were able to get me to tell them what happened. By that point, the guy had already driven off, and there wasn't much we could do other than complain to the delivery service. I sobered up quickly that night, but I was still hungry and even angrier after I fully realized what had happened to me that night. Story number three, Unblinking Eyes. I'm a delivery man, and I've worked for several restaurants and stores over the years. Lately, I started working for a delivery app. I won't say which one for obvious reasons, but let's just say it's one of the big ones. Anyway, since I've been delivering all sorts of things for years now, you can bet that I've got some good stories to tell, but none of them are as disturbing as this one. I got a call to deliver some food to a house on the edge of the city. I picked up the package from the store and followed the app to the destination. I've delivered to far out places before, so there wasn't anything strange about it. I'll probably lose my job for saying this, but sometimes I like to go through the customer's packages while on my way to the destination. I try to figure out what their life is like by judging what's in their package. This package was strange. It was filled with canned food, both for humans and for cats. The only thing I understood after going through it was why it was so heavy. I arrived at the house that my directions led me to. It was properly in the middle of nowhere. I carried the bag down the dusty dirt road and towards the creaking, old shack. I felt like I was being watched the entire time. The delivery didn't have any notes about the package, so I would usually just knock on the door. If there's no answer, I leave the package by the door and go. So, I walked towards the front door of the shack and planned on doing exactly that. I couldn't shake the feeling of eyes staring at me. I knocked on the door and waited for a while, but there was no answer. I shrugged it off and carefully placed the package on the floor. I usually like to hide packages. I know what it feels like to have a package stolen by a nosy neighbor or passerby. While I was searching for a good enough hiding spot, that feeling of being watched got worse. I could even feel someone breathing down my back. I might be overreacting, but that's what it felt like. I dropped the package behind some empty plant pot. When I stood back up, I was facing a small window on the left side of the door. It was only for a second, but as I stood up, my eyes met another pair of eyes. They stared straight at me, and I knew they were the eyes that had been watching me the whole time. They were wide and unblinking and they just stared at me. I felt the blood in my veins run cold. There was just something about those eyes and the way they stared at me, almost as if there was nothing behind them. I got out of there as fast as I could, and I never looked back. It may seem like a mild story compared to most. I can't explain the look in those eyes and how much fear they put into me. I wouldn't go back there for anything. Story number four, a threat. I was home alone one weekend, since my husband had been called to work for a sudden emergency. He works construction, so I guess any emergency at a construction site is a pretty big deal. Anyway, we had our own plans for the weekend, and before he left, I had already ordered some pizza and drinks for us. I won't say which app I used, for the sake of not wanting to get into any legal battles or anything like that. I figured I'd just keep the pizza in the oven and the drinks in the fridge till my husband got back and we could continue our plans for the weekend. We live in a weird cul-de-sac and sometimes people have trouble finding our house. So, when the app told me that my driver was close, I went outside my house and stood on the street. I only waited for about five minutes before I spotted the scooter driving down the road. It was all pretty normal at first. I waved to the guy and when he spotted me, he turned on his indicator and pulled into the side of the road. He stopped right in front of me and took off his helmet. As he looked at me, the look on his face changed. A smile spread across his face and there was a glint in his eyes. He passed the box with my pizza over to me. I felt his hand caress against mine and linger. At the same time, a sickening, smug smile pulled at the corner of his lips, almost as if he was holding back laughter. In that moment, he leaned in close to me and whispered the most terrifying thing I have ever heard in my ear. He said, I might come back here later. You should leave the door unlocked. I felt sick to my stomach. The chills running up and down my body felt like millions of tiny insects crawling beneath my skin. He leaned away and winked at me. The satisfied smile on his face was in response to the look of absolute terror on mine. I wanted to run away, but for some reason I was stuck in that spot. The concrete sidewalk had leaped up and swallowed my feet whole, trapping me in that position with that man. 
He chuckled to himself as he climbed back on his scooter and put his helmet on. I watched helpless, still stuck to the sidewalk, as he turned around and drove down the road. At some point I snapped out of it and ran back inside. I called my husband and demanded he come home. If that man had any intention of coming back to my house, I didn't want to be alone. We put so much trust in delivery drivers and apps. That trust was broken for me, and I don't think I'll ever get it back. Story number five. Wrong house. This happened to me a few years ago when I was a senior in high school. I don't like talking about it, but with food delivery becoming such a big thing since the pandemic, I feel like I should warn people about the dangers of letting a complete stranger handle your food. It was the weekend. My big brother and I weren't exactly social butterflies. Our weekends mainly consisted of staying inside and playing video games or vegging in front of the TV. My parents were the type to go out on date nights at least once a month. That weekend was their date night. So we had the house to ourselves. That didn't change our plans all that much. The only difference was we put the volume a little higher while we played our games. This one night, we had someone knock on our door. We weren't allowed to have company over while our parents weren't there, not that we were even expecting anyone. I answered, and it was a pizza delivery guy. I won't say for which restaurant. Anyway, he handed me the pizza, but I refused. We hadn't ordered a pizza. The delivery man insisted and stated that it was already paid for, and the instructions led him directly to my house. I'm not one to look a gift horse in the mouth. After all, our plan for dinner was to heat up some old mac and cheese sitting at the back of the fridge. I took the pizza and I even gave the guy a tip. A small price to pay for free dinner. My brother was just as surprised as I was. We left the pizza on the table in the living room and went to the kitchen to get some plates and something to drink. When we got back, the pizza was lying on the floor with a big chunk taken out of it. We have a dog, but he's usually well behaved. I guessed that my parents hadn't fed him before they left. My brother attempted to clean up the pizza while I went looking for our dog. I didn't want to blame him, but my parents would insist on disciplining him somehow. When I found him, he was spread out on the floor and he seemed to be breathing really heavily. I walked around to where I could see his face and noticed that he'd thrown up all over the floor. His mouth was hanging open and he looked really ill. I screamed for my brother since he was the oldest. I was around 16 at the time and I had no idea what to do. Thankfully, my brother shot straight into action. He called the emergency vet number and then he called my parents. Both arrived at the house around the same time. We told the vet about the pizza, but he said it wouldn't have caused such an extreme reaction alone. The vet told us that our dog had been poisoned. That was when we got the police involved. After some testing, they found that our pizza had been laced with all manner of drugs, enough to cause an overdose. Let me just say that our dog was okay. He got his stomach pumped and he survived. If my brother and I had eaten that pizza, we probably would have died. Obviously, the police investigated the pizza place, but they didn't have a delivery for my area scheduled and the delivery man I described wasn't even an employee of theirs. It's amazing how many monsters are out there. It makes me sick to think that I actually gave the guy a tip for trying to kill us. Story number one. Under the floorboards. The new house smelled. I'm not talking about that usual musty and stiff smell you get when you first move into a new house. This smell was rancid, and it lingered. I first noticed the smell when I was looking at the house. It's not like I had a lot of options. I was fresh out of university and working a part-time job. The house was cheap, and it meant I didn't have to go back to living with my parents. Anyway, by the time I started moving my things into the house, the smell had gotten worse. It was the middle of summer, and the extra heat made the rancid smell stronger. I dealt with it at first by opening up every single window and door in the house. With the fresh, hot air blowing through the house, the smell was just barely tolerable. I tried to busy myself with unpacking all my boxes. I'd like to say that airing out the house helped, that the smell was just due to the house sitting empty for a long time, but it wasn't. There was something else going on. That became obvious as the day went by, and it only got hotter. The heat made the smell grow even stronger. It got to the point where my eyes started watering. I thought that maybe the house was built on top of a sewage pipe that was leaking. I wasn't sure. All I knew was I couldn't spend another second in that house. I left everything open and called my parents. My dad fancies himself a man's man. He likes to fix things himself and does a lot of DIY for his and my mom's house. So he drove over straight away and said he'd look at the problem. 
The moment he got there, his nose wrinkled up and he started coughing uncontrollably. The smell had gotten even worse since I had called him. He wrapped a scarf around his mouth and went inside the house. After a few minutes, he was convinced that the smell was coming from underneath the floorboards. His theory was that some small animal got under there somehow and died. Honestly, I didn't care what it was, I just wanted the smell gone. My dad got his bag of tools out and I started to feel a little nervous. He said he'd be careful and that I wouldn't even notice if he pulled up one of the floorboards. As nervous as I was, I let him do what he needed to. I stayed outside while he started pulling up my floorboards. A moment or two went by and my dad came rushing out of the house. His face was as white as a sheet, his hands were shaking, and he was on the phone with the police. He wouldn't tell me what was going on. All he did was insist that I stay outside with him and he wouldn't let me go back inside the house. The police arrived and before I knew it, my whole house was a crime scene. Now I know why the house was so cheap. It wasn't just the smell that drove people away, it was the house's history. It had belonged to a man who'd been convicted of several crimes, the most serious crime of all being murder. His wife and child went missing and were never found, but there was enough evidence to prosecute and he was sent to jail for their murder. You might want to know what the smell was coming from. Well, the police finally found the bodies of the man's missing wife and child. He'd chopped them up and hidden them under the floorboards. Story number two, the previous owner. Around three years ago, I moved into a new house in what was supposed to be a quiet and boring neighborhood. My previous apartment was in the middle of downtown New York. The life I lived had been pretty hectic up until that point, so I just wanted to settle down somewhere quiet. My friends helped me with the move. We had some pizza, a few beers, and spent the day unpacking while joking about how boring the town seemed. They left just before it started getting dark, and I was alone in my brand new house. I'd been unpacking all day, so I just felt like chilling for the rest of the night. I opened up another beer and warmed up what was left of the pizza. There wasn't much to do, so I put a movie on my laptop. At some point, I noticed a sound coming from above me. I stopped the movie and listened carefully. It sounded like a soft, banging noise, as if someone was walking around upstairs. The only problem was, there wasn't an upstairs. There wasn't even an attic. I thought that a branch was banging on the roof even though there was no wind outside. I went outside to have a look. It was really dark, aside from the dim glow from the streetlights. I stepped out into the road and looked up at my house. I scanned the roof, but I couldn't see any branches and there were no trees anywhere near the house. I was about to give up and go back into the house when I saw it. There were two glowing eyes staring directly at me from behind the brick chimney. At first, I thought they belonged to a raccoon or something, but then whoever it was shouted down at me. This is my house, they screamed in a gruff and demanding voice. I jumped back and the eyes moved forward, followed by a tall, thin silhouette of a man. He moved across the roof on all fours like some kind of animal and made his way towards me. I ran away from him and the house. I made my way across the road and started banging on the door of the closest house. When I looked around, the man who was on my roof was gone. I had left the door to my new house wide open, but now it was closed. The door I was banging on opened eventually and a very cranky old man screamed at me. I did my best to explain myself and I convinced him to let me in and use his phone to call the cops. Long story short, the cops got there and found the man inside my house. He was adamant that it was his house and that I'd stolen it from him. Thankfully, I was able to prove to the police that he was lying. No one in the neighborhood had any idea who he was. He wasn't the previous owner of the house and even the police were baffled. I still live in the same house today, but I haven't had any more crazy men crawling all over my roof. Story number three, The Friendly Neighbors. This story took place during the early days of my first marriage. I've divorced and remarried since then, and I no longer live in the same house, but this story will stick with me for the rest of my life. Not long after we got married, my husband and I started looking for a new house to move into. It felt like some kind of tradition, we both wanted to have a family one day, so it only seemed right to move into a house where we could start building that family. After a few weeks of searching, we finally found a place. It was perfect and we moved in as soon as we could. It was big enough for a family of four, there was a pool in the backyard, and the garden was big enough for our two dogs. I loved it at the time. It was long after we moved in that some strange things started happening. 
First, all of the taps stopped working in the house, and we didn't have any running water for two whole days. That's how long it took for the plumbing company to realize that someone had turned the water off to our house. That was just the beginning. I came home so many times to find dead birds by the front door, and there was even a raccoon that drowned in our pool. It was horrible. One night we woke up to both our dogs barking in the backyard. They usually don't bark at all, not even at birds or squirrels. So, whenever they do bark, we take it pretty serious. My husband launched out of bed and ran outside wielding his baseball bat and a flashlight. I stayed in bed, phone at the ready, and waited for some sort of sign from him before I called the police. It wasn't long until I heard his voice, shouting at someone to get off our property. I instantly dialed the police and told them what was happening. I had no idea what was going on. I could only hear my husband yelling with someone, and someone else was yelling back. The whole time our dogs continued to bark. It was all so much, but when the police finally arrived, they were able to arrest the intruder and I felt a little bit of ease. That is, until my husband and I found out the whole story. When he went out into the backyard, he found our neighbor, who'd come over to welcome us to the neighborhood when we first moved in, trying to drown one of our dogs in the pool. I was shocked by the news, but that was all. He was the reason behind all of the strange things that had been happening to us since we moved in. He told the police that his wife and he had been waiting for the house to go on the market so they could buy it. They were annoyed that we had outbid them. They planned on scaring us out of the house with all of their tricks. It's the craziest thing I had ever heard. I don't live in the house anymore and I have no idea who does. I hope they don't have to deal with the same things that happened to us. Story number four, The Watcher. I've always had this dream ever since I was a little girl. I would be living in the house in the middle of the woods. I would spend my days surrounded by nature and be completely alone. I'm a little antisocial, so that kind of life is really appealing. Around four years ago, I finally made my dream come true. I found this beautifully modern house out in the middle of the woods in Arizona. It was only a few hours drive away from the nearest town, which means I wouldn't be completely alone, but it was isolated enough for me to jump at the chance. I moved in straight away and started my new life. I'd been living in this new house for over six months. I'd made a few friends in the nearby town, but I managed to maintain the feeling of being completely alone with nature. It was around this time, however, that I started to feel not so alone anymore. I had this feeling that I was being watched all the time. I would hear strange sounds coming from outside the house, like tapping on the windows or scratching at the doors. I thought it was just animals at first, until one day I found some footprints in the mud right outside my bedroom door. I was terrified. I invited some of my friends over to stay the night. I didn't feel like being alone after finding those footprints. The night went by quickly and it actually ended up being kind of fun. I had never had a girls night before so it was a really good night for me. Eventually we got tired and settled down in our sleeping bags for the night. I took the couch in the lounge so I could be with my friends. I'm not sure what time it was or how long we'd been asleep but at some point in the night we all woke up to the sound of screaming. One of my friends had gotten up to get a drink of water. When she started screaming, we all jumped to our feet and ran to her aid. As we got into the kitchen, we all joined her in screaming at the masked man trying to climb through the open window above my kitchen sink. I was frozen in shock. My mouth hung open and a high-pitched scream escaped it, but other than that I was frozen. Thankfully, one of my friends reacted quickly. She picked up a glass nearby and threw it at the man. It shattered against his head and knocked him to the floor. She rolled the rest of us back into the lounge and locked the kitchen door. We huddled together and waited for the police to get there, which took a while since we were so far away from town. By the time they did get there, the man was gone. I still live in the same house, but I've had some cameras and alarms put in. The man hasn't been back since, but every now and then I get that feeling that I'm being watched again. Story number five, the new family member. I'm the youngest child of seven kids, and we're always moving from one house to the next. We moved into the house that I live in right now around two years ago. My siblings and I were told that we'd each get a room to ourselves. My parents didn't say that one of those rooms was going to be the attic. I was the youngest, so I got my pick of the rooms last. It's no surprise that the only room left was the attic. Honestly, I was okay with it. I'm kind of a loner, and the attic ended up being the largest room in the house. It was more of a loft. All it needed was a bit of cleaning, some decoration, and I knew it'd be a cool room. 
In the first day of moving there, I already had all my boy band posters hanging on the walls, and my white and pink bed moved in. There was still a lot of unpacking to do, but it was a good start. That night, I left the windows open when I went to bed. It was musty and the air was stiff. I had a small lava lamp that I just couldn't sleep without, so I made sure to set that up as well. In the middle of the night, I woke up to a loud bang. I shot straight up in my bed. It was pitch black and I couldn't see a thing. For some reason, my lava lamp wasn't on anymore. I felt around for the switch and flicked it a couple of times, but it wasn't turning on. I checked the plug by the wall and it was unplugged. I was scared, but I figured one of my brothers snuck in and unplugged it to scare me. I plugged it in and the room lit up instantly. I started searching for whatever it was that made the banging noise. The window I had left open was now closed and I figured the wind blew it shut. I got up to open it and that's when I heard it. A deep voice whispered from the dark corner behind me. Turn the light off. All the blood drained from my face and my whole body began to shake. That voice didn't belong to any of my brothers. It was far too deep and sounded like an old man. I was frozen in place, but only for a split second. I ran out of that attic as fast as my small legs would carry me, screaming for my mommy and daddy the whole time. I woke up the whole house. Everyone was angry with me, but their anger quickly turned to fear when I told them that there was an old man in the attic. As you probably guessed, we called the police. My mother insisted that my father wait until they got there, so we did. They found the old man asleep in the corner of the attic, behind some of the boxes with my things in them. They also discovered a hole in the way that led to a secret area in the back of the attic. It looked like the man had been living on the other side of that hole for a long time. I still freak out in the middle of the night whenever I hear a sound, but I know that the man isn't there anymore, and my dad has patched up the hole that led to his secret home on the other side of my bedroom wall.